Welcome to the Zweig Letter Podcasts, putting architectural, engineering, planning, and environmental consulting guru Mark Zweig and his team of experts straight talk in your ear. Mark has more than 30 years of experience helping AEP and environmental firms thrive, and these podcasts deliver his invaluable management, industry, client, and HR advice directly to you, free of charge. The Zweig Letter Podcasts let you develop professionally, wherever you are. Hey, everyone, and thank you for joining us for another episode of the Zweig Letter Podcast. Our goal is to bring you some of the best and brightest minds that the AEC industry has to offer. Today, I am pleased to welcome back yet again, Sanjay Jenkins. Sanjay is uh, a member of the Zweig Group team here in Fayetteville, Arkansas. He's part of the the marketing and social media team, and uh, he's doing all kinds of things to help push us into the forefront of the 21st century when it comes to marketing and branding and uh, just an all-around great guy. Sanjay, it is great to have you back once again, and and uh, I think this marks another episode of our life hacker series and we're going to be talking about marketing today that's correct yeah thank you for having me back on the show it's it's a second home at this point (laughs) right right exactly so yeah we're going to keep it going uh with you and i think you guys are going to hear more and more of sanjay as we move forward but um so so today uh really want to talk about um just you know I think the phenomena of social media and marketing, and especially at the the crossroads of where they intersect in the design industry and how firms can leverage and take advantage of that. Um, we, we had a really interesting um, situation happen actually just yesterday, and I thought it would be good for you to kind of share and tell our audience exactly what transpired and what we did yep. and, and actually what the, um, the feedback was, which mm-hmm. I thought was quite interesting. Okay, so let me set the stage. Yesterday we come in, uh, I'm on Twitter, and uh, I see trending hashtags. And some of the trending hashtags, these are uh, things that are trending for everybody. And then it's also going to give you stuff that's relevant to what you normally look at. One of those things that um, was relevant to what we at Zwy Group, the, the Zwy Group Twitter account normally looks at, uh, was the licensed PE day. Yesterday, um, August 2nd, was licensed PE day. So we had this, uh, we've been talking about this for a while now, um, but to sort of directly reach, directly message people on social media, because um, that's, you know, one of the, the biggest strengths of, of Instagram and uh, Twitter specifically yeah. is to be able to connect with people, you know, on a one-on-one basis. So what we did was we, uh, we looked at everyone who was a, a PE, or we looked at these big organizations and we sent them uh, just thank you messages. And they were completely genuine. Like we genuinely believe that uh, the work that PEs do is valuable and it's, it's necessary. It keeps us safe. Yeah. And, you know, this whole day was for, uh, you know, it was for them is to celebrate that, celebrate yeah. PEs. I, I want to put a disclaimer out there. I know that there are, I know for a fact that there are architects in the audience listening. So we love you too. And when there is, you know, licensed architect day, we are going to celebrate you with the same vim and vigor that we celebrated licensed PE day. So have no fear. Uh, there will be equal love on this podcast for <laughs> architects, just like there is for professional engineers. Yeah. It's just a matter of time. Don't you worry. Yeah. <laughs> so what we did was, uh, you know, videos. We did videos directly uh, targeted towards certain organizations, certain uh, firms, um, and certain people, uh, all PEs. Um, to saying, hey, it's you know Randy from Zwy Group or AEC Workforce. It's Sanjay from Zwy Group. Uh, we're we just want to thank you, and you know we mention these people by name. We yeah. tell them you know we we try to contextualize what we say as much as we can, and this turned out to be a huge thing for us. Uh, we got so much exposure, a lot more retweets than we normally do. And, and people started to have conversations with us. And that's like the best kind of engagement that you can really have on social media is when people start talking back right. and start saying meaningful things to you and saying, Hey, actually, you know, thank you for, for reaching out or thank you for shouting us out or, or it was so nice of you to say that, um, that is the foundation of a relationship, which is what social media is all about. Right. And uh, this is a really great 
Uh, I mean, we didn't, we were there for, I mean, less than 30 minutes. We were doing that for less than 30 minutes yesterday. Uh, or maybe, you know, maybe just over. It didn't take us long to do it. And all we used was um, my iPhone uh, and Randy's iPhone. And that was it. Like, we didn't have any special tools. And we were able to dramatically increase our following in a short period of time, increase our engagement, and uh, connect with people that we never connected with before. And and we got a lot of exposure that uh, we just wouldn't have gotten if not for how we uh, we played license uh, hashtag license PE day. Yeah, well, I mean, absolutely. I think it was a great testament and an example to the stickiness of social, um, why you actually have to be social in order to engage in social media. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not just something where you slap the app on your phone and all of a sudden you're you know you're socially connected right i mean you actually act, you actually have to have a conversation it's kind of like you know i liken it to going to a party and if you're a wallflower and you don't want to dance or you don't really want to interact with anyone and you kind of sit by the wall well you know what you get in that situation uh, you don't get much interaction it's the same thing mm-hmm. here it's that you have to kind of be um you have to you have to take the initiative to be active in this space. And I know that, I mean, I can imagine that a lot of people that would listen to this podcast and are listening are probably thinking, well, you know, Sanjay, Randy, we, you know, we're so busy. We don't have time to engage people like that. And I'm, I'm noticing that more firms out there are hiring people to focus on things from a, um, uh, from a social media standpoint, some firms are actually hiring social media managers and others or or an extension of a, a a team's marketing group will handle all the social media inquiries and, and everything related to social that comes through the doors. And I think it's important that firms need to start being intentional about that. You know, what does their social media footprint look like? We're not suggesting everybody has to go out there and be a Gary Vaynerchuk or, you know, some of these other, you know, um, you know, internet celebrities, if you will, that that have you know, millions of followings, but you know, we, we were, this is a niche industry, the design industry, construction management. It's, it's a very niche industry. There aren't, but so many people that work in this space. And so, um, you want to do all that you can to set a standard for what your organization is about to, to get the word out about what you do and what makes you special, right? Because each person listening to this and the firm that they represent thinks that they're the best thing going, right? You need to tell that story. You need to get, you need to create context for it. You need to be able to let people know, hey, this is what XYZ engineering is all about. This is what ABC architecture is all about. And you not be ashamed to let people know, hey, this is how we do things. This is how we operate. This is how we interact with our clients. Um, the, the, this is what we do. And I think this, you know, the, the license PE days is a prime example of how you can leverage just the 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 natural buzz that's taking place yeah. over a particular event or a situation and leverage your brand um you know quickly in a quick manner because i think because of what we did yesterday i mean i've had i can't tell you i've had countless people following me now that weren't following me before right um obviously we got a ton of likes and i mean you know some of that may be you might say oh well what does that really mean or how can i translate that into dollars Again, just think of it from the perspective of you're being social. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you exactly, because nobody can, exactly what your rate of return is going to be on your investment into social media, but there is an ROI in in terms of uh, your investment in social media. Um, and, And some firms can directly point to certain things that they've done that have brought them success, that have won them work, that has gotten them additional accolades, or maybe somebody has picked up the phone and called them and said, Hey, you know, so-and-so I saw what you did for that firm down the street or that company or that entity or whatever. I need that same thing done for us. Can you help us out? You just never know. And all it takes in this industry with the kind of billing that the people that are listening to this podcast Mm -hmm. bill out in a lot of instances, whether it's a small, medium or large size job, I mean, all it takes is one project to just change the landscape. I mean, heck, some of you guys could make enough on one project to physically hire somebody to maintain this full time for you. 
And I, and I understand that there are firms out there that are maybe under 10 people. They just don't have the capacity to bring on somebody full time from a social media standpoint. But certainly, I mean, even just listening to some of the stuff that we're talking about on this podcast and some of the things that we share in the Life Hacker series, you can get some tips and tricks to employ in your daily um, program as it pertains to social media and figure out ways to uh, continue to advance your organization and what you guys are doing. Randy, I'm going to ask you an interesting question. Um, you walk to the the kitchen every now and then, right, to get some water. Or you you know you walk to the bathroom, correct? Here in, here in our office here at Y Group, all the time. Yeah. So, is your office like right next to the bathroom? I wish it was. Yeah, but it's not. Or the kitchen? Yeah, it's not. Yeah, so it is not. You have a little bit of a walk, maybe I don't know, fifteen seconds, twenty seconds. Well, I don't know if you know this, but you could pull up Twitter or Instagram in that time, find someone to to DM and DM them. By the time you get to the kitchen, by the time you get to you know to the the refrigerator to get some water. Everyone's trying to be 95% billable or 100% billable. I know it's, you know, it's 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 a good goal. I get why that exists. But there are these little pockets of time when we we can't be 100% productive, but we're just not capable of that. We're not machines. Right. Um you have these little moments where you could do the one, two, three little things that could change the game for you forever. And the Ease of use on on these social platforms allows you to do that, right? Um, DMing people or sending them, you know, like ma- just making a quick video, like thirty seconds, all it takes, all it took yesterday. I mean, I don't think uh, I remember. I mean, I recorded m- those videos yesterday. I don't remember m- any of them going really above forty seconds. Really, yeah. A lot of them tended to be around twenty five seconds. Right. That's it. Yeah. And you just need to do two of them a day. If you do two of those a day, every day for a week, just a work week, and when you're walking to get to get some coffee and you're walking back to your desk or something like that, whatever the case may be, you can do this. It's not, you know, I, I think people get overwhelmed, like, oh, man, we got to do so much. Right. You really don't. Yeah. You really don't have to do this huge, you don't have to run these big campaigns. If you do little things over an extended period of time, that's, that's really what's going to you know change the game for you. Slow and steady wins the race. Yeah. It's not a sprint. You don't have to get out there with the best um, equipment. It's not about uh, a certain level of production value. Right. That's the challenge. And I know with engineers and architects, sometimes, uh, and again, I'm not, I'm just, I'm not casting um, any, any, any names or throwing names at people, but the, but sometimes, you know, the, the audience that we have in the design space can sometimes overthink things. Yeah. It's really simple. Pull out your iPhone, mm-hmm. shoot a 30 second video, shoot a one minute video. That's why Instagram's videos are only a minute long. I mean, keep it simple, real simple. Yeah. Shoot some thoughts, maybe come up with a thought of the day or just a design thought of the day you know, that, that, that is a, a, the embodiment of what your organization or firm is all about, you know, and it could be, you know, it might be something along the lines of, um, you know, you may do, you may do things that are really exciting, you know, like building really big buildings, skyscrapers, you make really cool bridges, um, really cool, um, land development projects, or maybe you do something in the wastewater field, which let's face it, it's not sexy. I get it, but it's still relevant. There is information out there that you could be providing to people that people would find real value in. So don't, you know, don't um, shoot the messenger. No, no, just come up with a plan and and figure out a way. And and if you need some help with that, you know, there are social media strategists that can help you kind of come up with a way to leverage the information that you do have to share. Because we know that that everybody that's listening to this, uh, you got you guys are building and doing and designing great stuff. And uh, no matter what, um, somebody is going to talk about it and you need to be the first person to be talking about it. Mm -hmm. And and I've said this before, it's a pitiful frog that that doesn't praise his own pond. If you're not excited about what you do, how the heck will anybody else be excited about it? So, you know, so you need to be at the forefront of that and figure out a way to leverage your message and get it out there to people. And if you need some help, uh, and, you know, Sanjay or I or somebody else on our team can help you out. We'd be more than happy to chat with you and maybe give you some ideas and even brainstorm for a few minutes. But it's really not that difficult no. um, to get out there and get started. Yeah, this stuff is this is this is what I call the ground game. This is 
the this is free stuff but hard i mean not not hard in the sense that you got to do it a lot you have to have the patience to be you know to be able to do this day in and day out be consistent with it even if it's just twice a day for 30 seconds at a time that's fine but you you know you have to be it's it's hard to keep that going over over a period of time and i i struggle with that myself um but the return on that is just i mean phenomenal like yesterday uh one of the one of the firms that retweeted us and ended up having a conversation with us was um, NSPE, mm-hmm. uh, the National Society of Professional Engineers. Yeah, they were one of the big people that were pushing that whole hashtag campaign. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, and they were retweeting everybody who was, you know, doing hashtag license PE day. Yeah. If you were a firm, um, you know, you could have tagged them in it, or even if you just had hashtag license PE day, chances are you're going to get some sort of engagement with them exactly. and they were so excited it was it was a- amazing to see how excited they were about it yeah and you know it, every their communication with us um you know via twitter uh really really conveyed that and i feel like we have a very we're able to like build a a deeper relationship with them now because we had that micro interaction yeah on, on twitter yeah um you you just never know how these things will turn out but you got to like approach every situation with with empathy. You got to care about who you're communicating with. Right. Um, you have to s- try to understand to your to the best of your ability where they're coming from and, and what they care about and, and, and engage. Yeah. You know, you know, you mentioned it earlier. You can't sit on the sidelines. You mm-hmm. can't. This social media is not a passive thing. No. Um, if you want to make something of it, if you want to use it as a tool, if you, you know, capitalize on the tools. Um, yeah. Uh, that it provides uh it's yeah i mean that's just really that's really it i just i had that role going yeah no it was good it was definitely good and so i you know and i would i would certainly speak to a couple of things um a couple of ways that that anybody listening to this uh, you know anybody in our audience listening to this podcast can can take advantage of social media is um by by using social media to leverage your brand both from a business development perspective, which obviously we've been talking about ad nauseum, but also from uh, a, a recruitment and retention perspective. Mm-hmm. When it comes to hiring and keeping great talent, which is actually the name of the program that I teach, but when it comes to hiring <laughs> and keeping great talent, that's a shameless plug there. Um, one of the things that you need to do from a social media perspective is tell the brand story so that other people can get excited about working at your firm Mm -hmm. so that they can see, oh man, these guys go bowling once a week and they talk about it and they tweet about it. And there's Instagram photos showing people having fun. They don't just work 60 hours a week and not do anything. They know they work hard and they play hard. Um, That's a, a perfect opportunity for any firm to leverage social media, even if you just start there in terms of brand awareness when it comes to talent acquisition, Mm -hmm. letting people know, first of all, Hey, the people that work here like working here and here are examples. Mm -hmm. That's us at the picnic. That's the bowling trip. That's the trip where we all went skiing that, you know, I mean, you just go on and on and on. I mean, you know, we have a cornhole competition, you name it, whatever. And that's just a, a veiled reference for those of us that are in Arkansas, but because I certainly did not know what cornhole was, cornhole tossing was until I moved here to Arkansas and, um, as I like to call it, the Deep South uh, and um, or the Mid South, uh, if you will. But uh, the bottom line is, whatever you do that's unique to your organization, you need to let people know about it. It shouldn't be a secret. And to me, social media is like the best platform to get that information out there. And I tell firms all the time, and I'm amazed at firms that I go visit and they'll tell me some of the cool stuff that they do. And I'll say, how come that's not on your website? How come I've never seen you guys post anything about these, these mixers that you have every other week or these experts that you bring in to talk to your staff that help that that help grow your staff mm-hmm. and make them even better than what they are right now. That's the kind of stuff people want to know about. Again, from a talent acquisition standpoint, but also potential client standpoint. Right. They want to know that you're constantly sharpening the saw and getting better and better. Right. I mean, that's it it just goes without saying. But I I get it. I mean, everybody's busy and sometimes we're so busy that we just can't see clear beyond our current project. I get it. I totally get yeah. it. So, and in, and in those instances, when you're a firm that's of a decent size, maybe you do find somebody, you know, and you you make sure they understand the culture and they can tell a story of your firm. 
I see so many firms out there with great stories to tell and the books are closed. Mm -hmm. They're hit. Nobody knows, you know, except for a few people. And they do a little bit of, you know, they may throw up a little paragraph or two here on the website, but nobody's really telling the story. Mm -hmm. People don't remember a bunch of facts. They remember stories. Right. Tell a good story and people will remember you Mm -hmm. all the time. I don't care. And that's that's more in life than anything else. Sure. But I mean, it certainly is applicable in business and mm-hmm. it is applicable to the firms that we're talking to in the design space. Do you have any particular caveats when you're trying to export your culture to social media? Um, anything that, you know, maybe you should you should stay away from or, you know, you, how, like, what's the balance there? Like, yeah, I mean, that's obviously good. I mean, certainly in this political climate that yeah. we're in, I mean, we, you know, it's still, it's like we've never I don't think I've ever even mentioned uh, our president in, on the podcast. And it, it, it has it has nothing to do with, um, you know, uh, politics. It just has to do with the fact that some things I think you should just you know, stay focused on what you're doing, you know, stay right. in your lane yeah. as far as that's concerned. If it's, if it's a, if it is a discourse on political commentary, that's something totally different. But in most cases, most of us are are really just trying to get out there and interact with clients and potential clients. And you don't want to rub people the wrong way. Right. People fall on all sides of the aisle and, and you want to really be careful for that. So my caveat would be, I wouldn't talk about politics. Mm-hmm. Um, probably wouldn't talk about um you know, matters that really don't have a whole, whole lot to do with the industry as a whole. Yeah. I would certainly talk about um, some of the things that you guys, that you guys being the firms that are listening to this, the things that you guys do on a regular basis to make your environment special. Mm -hmm. Certainly I would talk about that. Yeah. Um, I would talk about, um, you know, I would certainly talk about the design aesthetic and and things that are important to you, Mm -hmm. uh, whether you're designing bridges or buildings or, you you know, uh, doing uh, greenways, it doesn't matter. Uh, You want to talk about that. I mean, so there's plenty of stuff to talk about, but certainly I would avoid any polarizing subjects Mm -hmm. that um, could, could certainly put you at odds with a potential client a potential employee, you know, you know, whatever your politics are, that that's your personal business. Right. Um, I probably wouldn't talk about religion. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would leave a lot of that stuff alone. Okay. And, and, so and the bigger, things. yeah, those, those issues, um, you know, and I, a lot of that stuff, you know, when you're like hiring someone, you can't, you know, ask those questions. Well, yeah, about. obviously there's, there's certain things you can talk about and certain things you cannot talk about, um, in, in, uh, you know, when you interview somebody. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, you, I would keep that same mindset here. Right? Okay. And, and so, and, 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 you know, there are a lot of social issues. Issues I probably wouldn't bring up in social media. There's a place for it in in a form for it in social media, but I don't think from the framework of how a business would operate and how a business would would share themselves socially would I get into a like quote unquote social commentary mm-hmm. about you know our sure. country and things along that line. Mm-hmm. I just think it's a slippery slope. Yeah, and sometimes Definitely. you can't come back. You could say one wrong thing and it will screw you up. Yeah. So please hear us very clearly <laughs> when we say this over and over again. Keep it really social. Yeah. Focus on your business. Focus on what you're doing um, to 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 make the built environment even better than it currently is, because we know that you are doing some amazing things. But that's really what you need to be talking about. And focus on your people too. highlight the people that work for your firm. Um, you know, throw out the accolades when accolades when you can and let them know, hey, this is, you know, that you really care about them. And, 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 uh, you know, like they say, uh, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Mm-hmm. You can use social media as a platform to do that, to get that word out, to right. appreciate somebody. Oh, Chuck just finished up the, the Johnson project or Sally just completed the, the, you know, whatever building. And we're just so excited about that. You know, you want to do that. The other thing too, that I'll mention, and we, we don't really talk about that that much. Uh, we haven't talked about it much on the podcast is that a lot of firms don't take advantage of press releases. Yeah. But you know, when you think of it nowadays, social media is the new press release. Yeah. Right. And so, uh, but and that's something we've done at Zweig. I mean, we when we were Zweig White and Associates, press releases were really big. We announced everything, and we encouraged firms when we uh, um, consulted them to announce everything as well. Figure out ways to get in front of as many people that will listen as possible. Nowadays, you have an iPhone. You've got a, a 24-hour press release. Yeah, you really do. You can get information out there. Um, set yourself up with an account on Instagram. Set yourself up with an account on Twitter. Facebook, LinkedIn, 
make sure that everything across the board is as um, uniform from a look perspective. And you know what I think we'll probably do is we're going to have an episode and we're going to have to bring on one of our graphic experts, oh, Donovan. Yeah. We're going to get Donovan Brigham, in here. And uh, we'll let Donovan talk about just the whole mindset of you know making sure that um, there is some continuity when I look at your brand in any form. And that's in pot, whether it's it's through the documents that you're sharing with clients or whether it's through your social media presence, um, there's some there's something to be said for that. And there is some there is some method to that mm-hmm. madness of, of designing things properly. And so we're, we're definitely going to have to bring Donovan on to the Life Hacker series and talk about that because he would have a lot to offer. And I'm sure some of you are thinking about, well, what could we do better or how could we improve upon our current um, situation when it comes to our logo and other uh, artifacts that we use to to get the word out about about our company. So mm-hmm. yeah, so we will definitely do that in the future, and that will uh, be another another dis- talk topic that, yeah, for another day. Absolutely, so, that's a deep dive. That yeah. will actually be a great video for you to tune in on. Yeah, on Facebook I think we, and I think, YouTube. Yeah, I think well. we, yeah. we will need to do that on Facebook Live and uh, maybe even show some examples. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and and put some links in the show notes about great design in the, mm-hmm. in, the in our industry because we actually do we vote on that in um, for Hot Firm. That's correct. And so we do a marketing and excellence award and we look at how firms br- brand themselves and we get some great ideas and we see some great things and I think maybe we should talk about that and and kind of give people kind of a glimpse into what uh what the um, what the the amazing firms are doing in the design space to kind of separate themselves from everybody else i mean it shouldn't be a secret uh, the the opportunity and and if you have the desire to 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 be better at what you do and how you represent yourself then you know we need to give them those tools mm-hmm. so you know what do you think about that um yeah i'm on, i'm on board absolutely <laughs> so, yeah as always so we'll do that we'll do that but anyway so that is um you know, I think that's just kind of a, a, a really good glimpse into our hashtag licensed PE, PE day, day from yeah. yesterday. And, and I don't know what, what, what are your biggest uh, parting thoughts on that? Uh, do. This is something that we, you know, we've read about. This is something that I've read about the direct message. Um, you know, I've thought about doing it and um, we, I, I've been hesitant to do it just for you know, I guess just a personal, I, I just had some internal hesitations that I needed to overcome yesterday. Licensed PE day presented itself and I didn't really think about it. I just did it 30 seconds and that those 30 seconds, you know, changed so much for our brand. Um, and I think it's very important for, uh, you know, everyone listening to understand that it's, it's not impossible. You don't need this entire ecosystem of, uh, you know, just a whole uh, marketing, you know, conglomerate backing you. You don't need an agency to, you know, help you do these things. You can do this while you're getting coffee. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I would say do and, and, and really have conversations. Yeah. Talk, talk to people. These are real, <laughs> real people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Real talk. <laughs> um, these are real people on the other sides of these accounts. And I think it's, very valuable uh, for you to approach them on social media as you would, uh, you know, approaching them on the street or at a, at a dinner party. Absolutely. Absolutely. Be yeah. Genuine. And, and and I think part of that again, is just the idea is that, you know, you don't have to do it all in one fell swoop. And if you can get maybe even a social media expert to kind of help you out and give you a blueprint to follow, mm-hmm. then you just, you know, wash, rinse and repeat. Right over and over again. That's mm-hmm. how you do it. It's not so much that you, you know, a lot of you guys are not in a position to hire a full-time social media person. There are, there are other ways you could get somebody out of school. You could get an intern. You, I mean, every, every young person that's, if you're in a town that has a university or a community college, I guarantee you there's somebody walking that campus that knows social, like the back of their hand that could come in and give you some really good ideas and really good framework for how you get things done from a social media perspective. And then you kind of walk them through your culture, your branding and your understanding of who you are, and then let them go to town and help you out. And that's one way to do it. But um, certainly you can, you know, you can spend more money and go and hire a social media strategist. I mean, you know, there are a number of things you can do. There's a, what about the middle road and um, like virtual assistants and uh, 
Yeah, you, you know, can get a virtual temp, assistant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we'll have to talk about that too. I wish we had more time, but um, virtual assistants are certainly another option and a way for you to kind of leverage some of the things that you just may not have time to do. Uh, virtual assistants are good for research. They're good for social media uh, applications and helping out in that way. And and so it's kind of like a, a situation where once you teach somebody what to do, they can go in and do it on a regular basis. But at the end of the day, you still have to be social. Oh, yeah. That's, got the, to. that's the whole idea. So anyway, but listen, Sanjay, thanks so much for taking time out of your schedule to uh, to join me for another Life Hacker series. We will be back again for another episode of the Life Hacker series very soon. I appreciate you doing this. Yeah, thank you for your, this opportunity once again, and I can't wait for the next time. I want to thank you so much uh, and encourage you today to get a free subscription of Civil Plus Structural Engineer Magazine. And to sweeten the pot, we are throwing in a couple of issues of the Zweig Letter 2. Just visit freetzl.zweiggroup.com and leave us your email address. We will take care of the rest. Everything will be delivered to you electronically. In addition, if your firm is looking to hire great talent, please join our mailing list for AEC Workforce. Just text the word HIRE FASTER to 66866 and that will get you on the list where you will learn more about this upcoming job board for the design and construction industry. You don't want to be late to the party when it comes to AEC Workforce. As a reminder, all ZY Group Media programs like this one are available in both podcast and video format. Um, in most cases, free for download on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and YouTube, just to name a few places. A link to all of this information, including contact information for our guests, will be in our show notes. And we'd love it if you go to iTunes or wherever you tune into this show and give us a five-star rating and share this link with a friend. Remember, as the great sage said, sharing is caring. I'm Randy Wilburn. And I'm Sanjay Jenkins. And you've been listening to Zweig Group Media, part of Zweig Group. Remember, we exist to make you more successful. Bye for now. Thanks for tuning in to this Zweig Letter Podcast. We hope that you can apply Mark's no-holds-barred advice to your daily professional life. For a free transcript of this or any episode of our podcast, please visit info.zweiggroup.com slash podcast. If you want more wisdom and inspiration, in addition to information about finance, HR, and marketing your firm, subscribe to the print or digital version of the Zweig Letter online at zweiggroup.com slash publications. 